everyone, and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. It turns out that our next transfer window is to EVE, and so we have a lot of Gilly contracts to work with, and I intend to do them. Uh, so we are focused on Gilly here, and we see the ore concentrations, hint, hint. Uh, I would like to make a base that will make use of that. We have a contract to build a new surface outpost and it actually requires an ISRU resource conversion unit on the outpost. It also requires a facility supporting at least 20 Kerbals, which is a lot. A lot that's a lot of Kerbals. So this is going to be a heavy thing. Fortunately, it's landing on Gilly. Unfortunately, we have to get it there. Uh, viewing Cupola needs a mobile processing lab, so it's going to be a full base. And since we also have to recover Shepgun and Shepgun's debris from the surface of Gilly, I figure we should just land it there. <laughs> this uh, I mean, would be most convenient, I think. Uh, re recovering Shepgun's debris is from the surface is going to be interesting. We'll need a claw, a rover claw that can fly, something like that. I don't know. Uh, I should have probably thought about it a little bit before picking this one up. Uh, taking debris from the surface is a lot different from picking it up in orbit. So, we've got some heavy duty stuff to do here. So, there's Shep Gun, there's the surface outpost. We have to recover Valnia and Valny scrap from orbit of Gilly. So, Valny scrap is there. And then we have to bring all of that back to Kerbin. And that's the idea. So it's a uh, surface outpost and two rescues, basically. Well, I better get to work trying to figure this out. On the bright side, Shepgun is a engineer, so that might be able to help us in the situation. On the downside, Shepgun is on EVA which doesn't help at all because I can't see what kind of part the scrap we are recovering is. Valny's scrap we can see is a P re-entry module, which is not too bad. But because Shepgun is on EVA, we can't really see what that part is. Taking a look at what it says in Mission Control, it's a 0.9 ton unit that's basically 1.25 meters in width and length and 1.9 meters in diameter. That sounds like a Mark 1 cabin the airplane cabin. Yeah, it sounds like this Mark 1 crew cabin, which is 0.9 tons, and is taller, and then 1.25 meters in the other two dimensions. So, if we have something like that, and then we want to claw it, and then bring it back to... I mean, the good thing is, bringing it back to, uh, to orbit around Gilly is not too bad. So, we don't need anything too fancy for that. But if we do it like this, I'd have to get it pretty precisely on the darn thing. Probably we will want wheels and such. Okay, so this is what I have so far, and a lot of things occurred to me. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities here. First of all, I don't know, a an engineer could potentially just take this crew cabin and attach it to something, right? Maybe. I. I don't know if that's possible or not with something this heavy. I haven't tried it. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, the wheels could be attached to pistons and we could lower them and raise them. I might do that. But uh, we have here landing legs just as a backup. We've got a lot of stuff just as a backup like the RCS thrusters. We have pretty large RCS tanks just in case. I think even the, though these are the small RCS thrusters, they would actually be sufficient to lift us off from Gilly uh, without the payload. With the payload, uh, it'll be tighter. But uh, we've got solar panels, we've got antenna, and we've got probe core to for the forward direction as we roll around using the wheels. Um, it is an ungainly sort of deal, so... But then, if you tip over on Gilly, it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, so, uh, probably we need some auto strutting and some strutting in general. Uh, I might decide to put the wheels on pistons if that's possible, though. That seems like Kraken bait to me, too, so that's one reason why I'm worried about that sort of deal. And, yeah, this is definitely not the only solution I thought of. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities when it comes to dealing with this. 
the ant engines might not even be necessary. The thrust weight ratio is so high on this Gilly uh, thrust weight ratio. So, yeah, we could have done with one ant, or we could just use the RCS. But maybe for other applications, say on some other, like the moons of Jupiter, it's not Jupiter, Jewel, it might be necessary. Uh, let me uh, switch editor and see. We're not quite low enough, but I just wanted to see whether this can roll around properly or not. So we're going to take it outside. Okay, so I'm going to put the brakes on. We're already uh, compressed and low to the ground, but of course on Gilly, the gravity is not going to be that strong. Okay, there we go. But with the low gravity of Gilly, it's going to be weird. But we'll have the RCS to help with that. I guess it, it works. The trick is, then this whole thing has to come back. Because it's going to have grabbed the payload, and that payload has to be brought all the way back to Kerbin. So we're going to dock to something with like an inflatable heat shield. But overall, this seems okay. Weirdly. Thought it would have been worse, but... No. Yeah, it's okay. Let me try adding pistons to it and see if it's still okay. Well, putting them on pistons does sort of make it hard for the landing gear. I mean, it, it's awkward for landing gear because when we retract them... Eh, I guess. Uh... As long as I put them side by side, I'll shift the landing gear a little bit more. Okay, brakes on, gear up. And it, probably we don't need the landing gear at all. Control, control from the right core. And brakes off. So this is fine. It doesn't seem like adding the pistons has changed much in terms of its its ride quality. I mean, its uh, ability to rove around a bit. It's never going to be a speed demon. And I haven't got the little controller, so I would just be raising it. Uh, like, uh, not transfers. Okay, well, it's on the ground. It looks like the landing gear is propping it up a little bit higher than I would like, though. I wanted it to basically meet the bottom of the the panels there. The landing gear collider is keeping us up a little bit higher. So I'll move the landing gear down a bit. Okay, well, let's say this is the thing to do it. Let's see how we get it there and how we package it up, whether we do the Valny bit as well and put them all together on the same truck, if you will, or whether we do those things separately. The base is going to be separate, I think. I'm going to make that separate. We might still land it at the same location, though. Okay, folks, this is probably a bad idea. So we've got the rig up top there. You can see upside down right now. And we've got this stage here to bring it over to Gilly, of course. But also, I wanted to do that other rescue as well. And that's where we might be doing something bad. So uh, we've got Valneys and Valneys Scrap. And that's just a pea pod. Uh, so one of these. I unlocked it just to take a look at it, really. So one of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the crew cabin assuming that's what it is right i'm only guessing that that's this is what it is right now uh so it's a mark one crew cabin here and then we have an engineer right so what's his face shep gun is an engineer shep gun uh, will ride along with it back to orbit you know, with this little sky crane kind of thing and then go outside, and this tug will remove itself, uh, go off, and it's going to grab the pea pod. And meanwhile, ship gun is going to take this remaining docking port on this and put it on this side of the Mark One crew cabin. And then once the claw returns, 
it's going to claw the P pod onto that docking port. Now, oh, or I'll just put the docking port there. Um, actually, what we could do is, hmm, we could take, it'd be better if we take the docking port off of this with uh, Shep Gun's help and put it on one side of the P, the other side of the P pod from the claw and then have the claw maneuver it, dock it to the Mark 1 cabin and then the claw separates from the P pod and claws itself to the side of this. The reason that's better is because it ensures that we continue to counterbalance the antenna, uh, this relay antenna here and the solar panels here. The reason why the, there's only two solar panels and they're all both on, oops, both on this side is because the combined mass of the solar panels plus the antenna is equal to the mass of this pod here. Now that's with the two docking ports, but let's not discuss that. Anyway, um, so yeah, you can see the parachutes. We've got the parachutes. We've got the inflatable heat shield for recovery in Kerbin's atmosphere. So uh, you can see sort of the height of the whole situation with the peat pod and the crew cabin there. But it's a complicated business, and there's a lot that can go wrong. So who knows? Uh, we've got about 2,000 meters per second in this stage thanks to the spark engines. They do not deliver that particularly quickly, uh, but actually it's a little bit better if we're in vacuum. Now we have to put it on a rocket and then send it on its way, I guess. We've got a controller on this bit too. It's tucked in there. And so we've got the solar panels, comms. Uh, this will have to rely on the relay, of course. It's a whole business. And then there's the 2400 that we have now enough to capture around EVE and then come back is another thing. Hmm. I might want more buffer on that, but... This is a pretty tight package right now. Yep. And then it's gonna have to come back with... Oh, it's gonna have to come back with additional payload, right? Because it's carrying the pods and all. Ugh. Uh, I don't want to make it taller in this direction, is part of the problem. It'd be better if it's wider, not taller, but then these things will stick out. I think I'll just leave it be and see what happens, and then we'll decide from there. Probably we're going to need a rescue for the rescue kind of thing. Probably. Yeah, we'll, we'll just send this over. Expect it to mess up and then work away from the failure. <laughs> so it's going to be like that. Okay, so we are going to launch it with a poodle stage to get it over to Eve. And then we've got the mainsail Supra, which uh, this is the original mainsail Supra, except I took off the, the um, air brakes because those kept exploding anyway. We'll try to recover it. Uh, again, it's not the inflatable heat shield version, it's just a small heat shield version. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, uh, well, hopefully our contracts will cover the cost. But let's just launch it right now, and then we'll work on the base separately. So, well, hopefully things will work out. Throttle up, SAS is on, and... Launch. It's looking good. No evident problems right now. Let's throttle down a bit. Okay, fairing set. Okay, we better coast to Apoapsis here. Oop, there we go. Okay, we're in a reasonable orbit here. And let's get the solar panels out on the payload before we separate. Okay, so that's good. That seems right. Off it goes. Well, if it would condescend to move out there, maybe we'll start its engine. Okay. But we will take care of the re-entry of this. So let's try and bring it down properly, maybe, hopefully. Using the Woomerang launch site as a reference, we will go to 
26, uh, no, uh, maybe 20 kilometers and see what happens. Because this won't get much drag without the air brakes. But then it might explode. Who knows? Who knows? I should arm the parachutes before we like lose communication. Ah, there we go. It was action group two. Well, we don't... We seem to be rolling around a bit. We do have roll control slightly on the probe core. But not with the Verners. Well, the engines sure are threatening to overheat. Uh, maybe we should rotate a bit. Well, they hit maximum heating really quickly though. <laughs> so, the rot rotation doesn't seem to help a whole lot. Oh god, that one's really close. Ah! Uh, oh, we lost one. And... Well, losing two engines and landing on ground is not a good thing. We don't have enough... points of balance. It'd be better if we could hit some water. Uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, maybe we're, we're leaning pretty severely. We're using that cross range. Somehow we have cross range. It's trying to save itself, to be fair, you know. It looks good, actually. They did a good job, uh, somehow. Trying to hit water instead. You'd think it was programmed, but no, it was just dumb physics. <laughs> recover, recover. Okay. All right. Well, we got some of it back. We weren't too far away from the KSC. I mean, not on the other side of the planet, anyway. All right, well, it looks like our timing is not too bad for the EVE transfer. We can get a very nice approach to EVE like this. Uh, some gap between us and Gilly, but not a whole lot. 6.3 degrees is very manageable. And this takes a uh, mild burn initially, and then a mid-course adjustment of 348.4, which we definitely have with the Poodle stage. So we're carrying more than we need initially. Uh, at, at this point, uh, the fuel up here will be reserved just for bringing it all back which is probably for the best and so yep that is the plan and let's get on with this naturally I have to keep in mind comms though so as we approach the node let's see how that is we've got a nice big antenna we could bounce off of something on another planet and currently, it looks like we're bouncing off of something at Minmus, which is fine by me. So, hopefully that will be good. Is that what it is? Well, it says we have a direct line to Nye Island, though. And that's right there. I think that'll hold out for our... Oh, and we've got ComSat there, too. All right. Okay, looking good. What an interesting contraption we have. And you notice I picked the nicer model of the Poodle. I think the other model is like two cheetahs, basically. Which is not bad. If the dual model actually has independent gimbling for the two nozzles, that's good for roll control. But then again, we have reaction wheels anyway, so... Not a major concern. I might have overdone this whole thing. We might not even have needed wheels for something on Gilly. We could have just RCS'd and grabbed it, but, you know. All the possible options have been applied to this. We have all the possibilities. It's conceivable even this little tug could have grabbed the thing and got it off of Gilly. 
It's possible. I may have overdone things. But wait till you see why I have planned for the the surface base. That'll really be overdoing things. I mean, and they're asking for a lot to begin with. Okay, trying to hit this precisely so that our mid-course adjustment really gets that good result. Okay, well, 0, 0.0. Let's see. Is it still the same approach? Uh, well, a little bit different, but I think we can fix that. Well, that's a safe periapsis and a close one. And we have basically the same inclination. So, all right, that is ready to go. So we'll have to keep uh, an eye on it, but first we'll launch the surface base. Okay, so here's what I was thinking. The Mark III cockpit is a good way to carry most of the 20 Kerbals, right? It's got 16, it's probably, I don't know if it's actually the most efficient way to carry them, but it's certainly simple. And so we'll have 16 Kerbals in there. And then if you put the Mark, uh, Mark III cockpit up front, you get to 20 Kerbals already. Now, of course, we have the mobile processing lab by requirement. So we actually have 22 here, but given the situation, I thought, well, why don't we turn this into a shuttle? I mean, we, the, the surface outpost doesn't need to be a permanent surface outpost, and this would be much more useful. And yeah, so this is what happened. So we've got the mobile processing lab, ISR unit. We've got both fuel cells as well as solar panels, because if we're going to EVE, I mean, we're going to be closer to the sun, so we'll get more power from them anyway. So that might be useful. Let me clean that up a bit. Um, so that would be a good thing. And the mass of the bay is a little bit extra. Obviously, the mass of the wings is extra, but that's about it. And they're not actually that heavy, the wings. Uh, so... Uh, we've got the antenna in there, and so dock board can generate power, obviously, we've got, and all the other stuff. Oh, viewing cupola. Hmm. That's annoying, isn't it? Well, they had to give us a viewing cupola requirement. Well, we're going to clip it in, darn it. Okay, well, we've got a cupola, darn it. So that, you know... Hmm. What about a cupola in the tail? I mean, obviously, they, they, they can't get into it. Maybe we've got, like, a tail gunner? I think that would actually... Uh, you know what? I, uh, these pods are no longer strictly necessary. Because I want the RCS, but we can do that a different way. I don't know why we would have one there, but it's actually somewhat less displeasing than having the cupola up front just a little bit it's a close call so we've got sort of a cargo bay oversight position for some reason now i switched out the the skippers which i thought looked better than these uh in favor of the vectors and that is because uh on the last launch with the shuttle we had a bit of a flippy problem these have better gimbling and I figured that just using two of these would be a good replacement for the skippers. The skippers, we were carrying three for the shuttle sort of style, but that's nine tons and they give uh, 1950 kilonewtons altogether. Just using two of these, it's eight tons, 2000 kilonewtons. So um, if we're not going specifically shuttle style, then this is probably for the best. We'll tilt them once we make the stack, which I haven't done yet. We've obviously replaced the Terriers with the more powerful Cheetahs, and that's because we're very heavy. We were at 213 tons, which is heavier than the actual shuttle, and the burn time was getting a bit excessive with the Terriers, given the things that we need this to do. We've got all sorts of this extra fuel going on here, so we couldn't really rely on the Terriers, so the Cheetahs are here. Uh, relatively in line, in line with the center of mass, so it shouldn't flip. Uh, now we've got all sorts of reaction wheels with the cupola and that up front as well. Now, for landing on Gilly, which we will need to do with this, we have these Verners for the downward stuff. Otherwise, we'll use the RCS, I think. And maybe I'll regret that, but basically we'll kill our horizontal velocity, go straight down, and then land. 
I considered putting Verners up top to force us down, but that's extra. Well, well, we're spending money, I suppose. Uh, no, let's not. The Verners um, are not that expensive, actually. All right, fine. All right, then. So we've got Verners on top as well. And we've got Oodles of Delta V. We've got Wheels and... I think now we have all the things. I put canards on to get the center of uh, lift forward a bit. Not that I'm expecting to do a whole lot of lift immediately and not to fulfill this contract in particular. So yeah, now I have to create a stack. Obviously we have the drills, so this can replenish its own fuel in theory. <laughs> I mean, in theory, I should probably put like a uh, a resource scanner in case we're doing stuff not on Gilly. This could approach an asteroid as well. Couldn't really... I mean, maybe we should have put a claw. I've got sort of a mission creep problem going, though. Let's just focus on what it's supposed to do. Alright. Anyway, uh, let's proceed and take a look at this in the VAB and make a stack with it. First of all, I'm going to rotate it like this so that we don't have to... Oh, do we only have one of the canards? Gosh. Anything else not symmetrical? You can see the radiators so that we can make sure that we get the optimal efficiency on our systems. But yeah, it looks like just the... Uh, canards are not... So oh, okay, back to the other editor. Okay, now we've got good canards. This is a heavy, heavy shuttle. It's got extra wingage. Hopefully that's enough. But... Who knows when we're going to get to fly it, fly it. Oh, uh, let's check the position of the center of... Where are the wheels now? Center of mass versus the wheel position could be important. Uh, that should be fine. We're not rotating off of a runway after all. at the moment. Okay. Well, I'll put together a stack and we'll see how it looks. Okay, well, even though I wanted to build it as sort of a legitimate shuttle with just the main engines on this side and boosters and all, I've had to fit a mainsail here just because we didn't have enough thrust weight ratio. I considered putting an extra pair of Clydesdales to get the thrust weight ratio, uh, but that would have been more expensive. It's just straight up a matter of cost. Uh, so we're going with the extra liquid engine on the external tank uh, to avoid the extra cost. And as a result, we have a surface thrust weight ratio of 1.36 and then after the boosters separate 1.11 there. So that's not too bad. And vacuum uh, delta V is as you see it. That should be enough to get us to orbit. And we could do an OMS burn with the with the cheetahs, so that's okay. I changed the uh, texture on these tanks because I decided for stylistic reasons that they should be different. And we have separatrons on the boosters, of course, but not on the external tank. But yeah, I had an extra eye still there waiting just in case I decided to do that option. And maybe that's still a good option. I think I've tilted the engines okay. They do have a lot of gambling to work with, so and of course, fuel priority is such that... Oh, uh, this tank is not what I thought it was going to be. Oh, that's interesting. When I changed the texture of the tanks, it changed the fuel priority of them. That's an interesting piece of information that I did not know. Okay, I, I, I just had them at the default texture. I set the fuel priority first thing. And... Oh, that, that bottom one is still the same. That's weird. <laughs> 
Okay, so maybe it just randomly changes fuel priority for reasons I don't understand. We are going to send Kerbals up, even though this is a test flight. I'll need a pilot, so there's a pilot. And I'll send Phil Cell as... Well, why don't we just have one pilot? There's no specific reason in this situation to risk more than one, one Kerbal, right? Yep, okay. It'll just be Megan all on her own. And hopefully things will go well. So yeah, it's a little bit easier with uh, engine on this side, of course. I hope. <laughs> I hope. Uh, things can still go wrong. Things can still go wrong. Just thinking if there's anything I've forgotten. It all looks pretty good. In fact, as far as separating from the external tank goes, the little Werner engines will help with that. We can push away using those. Okay, it's a heavy business. Not that expensive. Uh, most of the expense is in the shuttle right now, so... Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, I saw some wobbliness. But it's sort of straightened up. Let's time warp a bit to daytime and see if everything is still okay. Okay... Oh, okay, okay, let's auto-strut a little bit first. Um, like, I didn't really auto-strut the boosters to grandparent part, which is sort of important. I'll just auto-strut to grandparent part there. This to grandparent part will attach it to the shuttle. And might as well do that as well. Okay. All right, so hopefully that'll help. Yep. Obviously, I'm doing this. Uh, I, I wanted to do a shuttle thing partly because of the upcoming 40th anniversary of the first launch of the shuttle. That's on April 12th, so in commemoration. Well, here goes nothing. It's tilted a little bit. Got a little bit of a clamp hit. The boosters are sort of pushing harder on us, but that's all right. Eventually, as the tank drains... Well, no, maybe that's not all right. <laughs> Try to think about which way around is good. Maybe that's not the best thing. But it seems okay right now. At least we're going up and not immediately flopping. You know. Okay, passing through max Q. I didn't throttle down, so we're not really go at throttle up or anything. Kerbals don't throttle down. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of thrust from the boosters. We need to... Uh, I'm pushing hard on the stick down to balance it. Okay, off. Okay, they went off cleanly without killing anything. I think. Let's F3. Yep. Okay. For a little while we'll keep the mainsail on, but it might be better to switch it off eventually. Ooh. Yeah. I think we can switch this one off. Let's see. Yeah, it feels a lot better without that one on. It was really only for the initial bit, and if we could have done with boosters, that might have been better, but this, I think, was cheaper. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I'll have to think about that. Maybe we could have done with, like, smaller boosters on the side to supplement, instead of just two more Clydesdales. Certainly a third vector would have helped, but then we'd be carrying it all the way. And if we could avoid that, that's probably for the best. And it's expensive. We're getting a little bit high on the apoapsis. We were very energetic, it looks like. We've got plenty of spare fuel in this. We've got the whole that tall top tank there. Okay, okay. I want to get rid of it, though. If we had put a docking port on it and 
then left it in orbit, that might have been good. Okay. Arceus on. Separation. And push away, please. Okay. Alright, avoidance maneuver is good. I really should have put some small solar panels instead of relying on these, but... Alright, well, it is what it is. Alright, we are on the cheetahs now. At least Megan is a very experienced pilot. Let's see... We're using a little bit of pitch, but it's mostly balanced. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there. This has been a lot of development time. I've had to do a lot of thinking about how I wanted this, and also the previous thing, the sky crane or whatever you want to call it, uh, that grabber. So, yeah, we will see how this works out. I'm not going to transfer it over to uh, Eve yet. We'll do that in, at the start of the next episode, and then we'll follow things through. All right. So with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.